Thank you and good evening. So thank you for this um, nice opportunity to quickly introduce um, our work at the Waterfront Campus. And I will really keep it very brief, so don't worry. So, so we are here to watch this spectacular episode uh, of Blue Planet 2 about coral reefs. So I just want to um, take this opportunity to um, bring you into the system. And um, here you have a view from space on the Great Barrier Reef. And this is quite often um, used to show how a living structure can be seen from space. But in fact, coral reefs make up only about less than 2% of the total seafloor, so it's a very small area. Yet they hold about 25% or even more of all marine biodiversity. And that shows rather dramatically how important they are for biodiversity. So they are distributed all around the globe, most, mostly in the equatorial regions, and many of them are located in uh, developing nations and in nations with uh, low income. And especially in these countries, uh, the ecosystem services provided by the coral reefs are incredibly important. So they support overall the livelihood of about half a billion people, but in some nations, 50% of the protein supply actually comes from the reef. So they are a major source of income, for example, through tourism, and they are also the basis of cultural identity in man many island nations, for example. So they are important for um, uh, biomedical research, so, so they, are, they provide us with bioactive compounds, and I will uh, show you a little example from our research. Um, and uh, overall, their um, global importance um, is as iconic ecosystem. So, so, so everybody knows about coral reefs, so, so they are well suited to also um, communicate environmental issues and um, using these beautiful ecosystems um, can be a good way to bring this forward to the general public. So at the foundation of coral reefs are the reef corals themselves. Uh, they are animals and they are sitting on a calcareous skeleton. And their brownish color is derived from little uh, unicellular algae that you can see on the right upper picture that sit inside of the animal cells. So they are photosynthetic organisms and they use sunlight to produce energy for the coral. So when the corals are stressed, this relationship breaks down and as a result, the algal cells are lost from the coral and they turn white. So this is what um, is known as this infamous coral bleaching. And when the corals don't recover their um, algal symbionts with a very within a relative short period of time, um, they become vulnerable to starvation and to disease and eventually they will rapidly die. And as a result, the three-dimensional framework that is so important for coral reef diversity degrades very rapidly. Within a couple of years or decades, the whole structure can be gone. Um, and this is why, unfortunately, coral reefs are considered to be among the first ecosystems that really might go extinct due to um, global change. But it uh, is not only the, the global and climate change that affects coral reef, um, but it's also a, a lot of local stressor that contribute to the um, global decline of coral reefs. And that is mostly associated with the rapid growth of population, especially in coastal areas. So um, that leads to an increase in pollution, to nutrient enrichment of um, coastal waters, um, unsustainable fishing practice, um, to the introduction of um, invasive species, for example, the lionfish that is feeding its way through the um, food web of the Caribbean at the moment, and then also through careless tourism. So our work is uh, located at the Waterfront Campus, and um, we have the luck to um, have access to this uh, nice experimental facility of the Coral Reef Laboratory. And in this experimental aquarium, we have a number of coral species that we can expose to controlled environmental conditions. So we can change environmental parameters either individually or in combination and see how the corals respond to various forms of stress. And that allows us then to better understand how um, they are affected, for example, by climate change. 
And being at the University of Southampton, we also have then the luck uh, to have access to a formidable infrastructure. So we have a number of collaborations, for example, with the General um, Hospital, with the University Hospital Southampton, where we can use them high-tech machinery to analyze our corals. And that gives us um, a great uh, opportunity to understand at the molecular level what is going on. So one of uh, the areas where we were active are uh, the fluorescence of corals and um, you can see here a, a fluorescent brain coral and we've been working on them for more than a decade and um, we have discovered a number of um, important um, insights um, how they function for the corals, how they protect them from uh, excess sunlight, but also how they provide an optimized light field for corals and greater water depth. And this particular brain coral yielded a green fluorescent protein that turns red when you shine a pulse of UV light on it. And that makes it very useful as marker in biotech applications. And in fact, Eric Betzig uh, used it to invent um, his concept of super resolution microscopy for which he was um, awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2014. So, so this is a nice example how these bioactive compounds out of reef organisms can really help research and especially medical research. So we are using the um, Persian Gulf as a natural laboratory. So you can see here the map of the Gulf. And this is a, a temperature map. And in the southern parts of the Gulf, you have the hottest reef environments of the world. So temperatures go up to 35 degrees on a regular basis in summer. And still you have corals growing there. And so, so we want to understand what allows them uh, to grow under these brutal conditions. And um, part of our work uh, was then to study the algal species and we discovered that many of them have a new and distinct species um, of um, algal cells and that was discovered here in Southampton and we named it uh, Symbiodinium thermophilum. And finally, a large project um, which went on for five years now was dedicated to, the, to study the effects of nutrient enrichment and we found that um, unfavorable nutrient environments can in fact increase the susceptibility of corals to bleach. But that in turn also shows that uh, it's very important to keep the water quality at the best possible level because that will allow then the uh, corals to take on a little bit more heat. So uh, that has implication obviously for uh, policy development and this is why we are um, collaborating with governmental organizations um, um, together with our public policy uh, uh, unit at the university to convey this message to uh, policy makers. And we've run recently um, a workshop with an environmental uh, governmental agency in Abu Dhabi where we um, gave lectures to them and discussed opportunities how they can um, improve the water qualities to render the reefs more tolerant to stress. So last but not least, we are communicating this also to our students and um, my colleague, Dr. D'Angelo, um, has actually um, started now a new module. This will run um, next semester and we are directly communicating the findings of our research in this module. So with that, I'm at the end of my brief introduction. I want to thank the funders of our work. I thank you for coming and we are all looking forward to this, what is um, sh surely be a spectacular episode. And um, if you have some questions, I will be here after the, the screening and then I would suggest we have a little discussion afterwards, but now we should not um, wait any longer and switch to the screening.